taking a look at Spark. It's an email app by Riadal, as you can see here. And honestly, it's a pretty interesting email app. Now, um, it basically takes your traditional email kind of, I guess, interface, and it adds a couple extra features, and that's what we're going to be taking a look at today. So as you can see here, just from the basic statistics, it's a pretty good app. It's well received by the uh, public. It's given. It was given the Editor's Choice Award, and it, it's only 50, um, 50 megabytes. So you know you're not going to be wasting space with this app. The main thing behind this app, the main motive, is that you can kind of use your email easier, or I guess more efficiently than before. And after using it for around a week, here are my thoughts. Of course, so after uh, signing up, you get this little loading screen. Then it takes you to the client that you signed up with. You can sign up with, uh, you can uh, you can register any email with Spark. Uh, you don't need to create a Spark account, which is kind of neat. You can just use anything that you've had before. So for example, I'm using a Gmail account since I used to use Gmail. And that makes it really nice for if you're trying to transition. You don't need to like create your own account. You can um, just use whatever account you used to have. So um, there we go. Signing up with the Google client. And obviously you can use like Yahoo and like iCloud and stuff like that. It kind of gives you a quick list here of all the different accounts you can use. I'm pretty sure you can use more as well. Those are just the big ones. Okay, so let's waste no time and get right into the review. So uh, first of all, as you can see here, uh, I, wrote a, I, I wrote this email to myself. Um, and we'll, we'll, we'll take a look at this in a bit. No, don't worry. Okay, so, um, so first of all, a couple of interesting things. Well, the first thing is I, I'm actually logged into two accounts right now, and that's one of the features. You can uh, register multiple accounts into the app uh, simply just by clicking command comma or by going to spark and then preferences and just adding an email. And you can do that by, uh, you can say change email, and then you can add account this way, and then you can add an account. And they have a lot of settings too, so that's actually another plus point. If you don't like something, chances are you can customize it here. Um, obviously, yeah, you can manage a lot of things here, change your folders up, maybe add an extra signature or two for all your accounts, so that's nice. Another thing is, um, this is the dark theme, by the way. Uh, I have it so it changes automatically based on the time. It's kind of late right now, so. So right now I have, uh, this is obviously I signed up with a different account, but this is my personal account here, and I'm having emails from a personal account. That's because this smart inbox, as indicated by this thing here, organizes every email from every single registered email account into a nice kind of straightforward inbox that you can just kind of scroll through and kind of just get the gist of what's going on in life and then be on your merry way. And when you finish reading whatever you need to read, you can just click the check mark and it'll check out everything. So let's say I let's say I, I, I don't like let's say I don't care about these, I just want to get them out of the way. I can click red and I can get them out of the way. And if it's something like this, I don't think I can read all the newsletters at once just because there's so many. But yeah, okay. But there are like, um, obviously, okay, but yeah, you can click this check mark in the corner and it gets rid of the whatever is available for you right now. On top of this, Riattle also sends you emails regarding Spark, just like, um, just some quick tips to get more out of Spark, as they're saying here. That way you just, um, that it's just giving you some simple tips so you can get the most out of your Spark experience. And they'll keep sending these uh, periodically and it's kind of neat, actually. Because even I like even after using it for a week, you're not going to get every single feature down. However, with this, you may learn something that you didn't know before. Now, simply looking at the email here, you can see that we've got a couple different options. Here, we kind of have a tool set talking about all the different kinds of uh, um, operations. These are pretty standard. So you can snooze this. What that means is basically it'll turn it off for now. It'll mark it as red for now, but it'll alert you that you still have to read it later. So it's like snoozing an alarm almost. You can archive it, obviously, delete it or move it to a different folder, then you have some other additional options in here. Okay, so, and that's it. And then you can obviously add labels to this to help organize it if you're into that. You can actually change which category this comes under the smart uh, the smart inbox, so that's pretty nice. And then obviously if you don't like the smart inbox, you can just switch to classic. And classic just kind of throws all the emails together, like just one big thing. So, right off the bat I'll tell you, I liked this interface pretty much, like I had no problems with it. Um, you can obviously change things if you don't like the design, but like you can go to, uh, appearance in the general settings, and then you can kind of just change anything you need to, uh, change the theme, maybe color code some stuff. I, I like the default, so I'm going to keep it as is. Yeah, so I'm liking the look here, honestly, because like, I like to have everything kind of separated into categories, 
but I like the idea of having it in one place where I can just kind of scroll through once and just get the gist of what's going on today. What I like better is actually writing an email. So composing emails is actually really neat. So obviously you can copy people and you can obviously message. This top part is largely unchanged. And obviously if you want to switch accounts, you can do that from here. So that top part is largely unchanged. However, it's the additional kind of extra quirks here and there, the extra bells and whistles that they've thrown in here that kind of, they've definitely helped me and they'll definitely help other people too. So you can obviously share your emails with uh, other people in your team. This is a team app, by the way, but I'm using it personally. You can, it doesn't really matter. But it's better optimized for teams. So you can collaborate with people if you're kind of working together to make a formal email to someone, you can definitely work on that here. I actually need to create a team, I haven't done that yet. So um, I can actually, I can choose to schedule this email uh, for any date. It gives me some suggested dates that are most common, but you can obviously select your own. That's nice for if you want to send an email maybe later and you're afraid that you'll forget. Like let's say I, I know I want to send an email like in two days, but I'm pretty sure I'll forget. In that case, I can just schedule it for two days and then I'll have that sent for some reason. You know, it's helpful. You can also remind yourself to um, reply to other emails that you haven't really looked at. You can do that here for some reason. You can also make templates, which I find pretty nice. You can attach things, obviously. But here's the main thing. Here's the main thing. This text style. You can style your text any way you want, as if this was like a word editor. And the reason I like that is because it allows me to place kind of subtle emphasis. Like, for example, let's say I like, uh, let's say I'm writing this really big email. So let's say I say a bunch of stuff. But then somewhere in there, I say like a date that I, that's important. Like, let's say I say this is um, September now. Okay, so I'll say on September 13th, 2020, we've got something important going down. If I want people to really focus on there, what I can do is I can like, I can highlight this and then I can bold it and I can underline it and I can really just get people's attention to it. I can even change the color if I want to so like red or something that really grabs people's attention. So I can obviously just change things. I can make things look nice. And I, you know, so obviously like, you know, I can tab here as opposed to like, cause Gmail, since it's a website, you can't really tab. It just kind of switches to another element. But here I can tab, it's, an, it's like a mini word editor. And another thing that I like is you can disable it and then instead it'll come on anytime you highlight something. So see a mini bar came up here, so I can just directly add styles here. So I like this version better just cause you can have different things for different things, if that made any sense. And yeah, so I kind of like having this kind of pop up here. It kind of seems more simplistic and futuristic to me. But let's say I don't want this style anymore. It even includes an erase all styles button, which kind of clears up all the styles and it's gone. And I can add new styles this way too. I can obviously make things lists, both ordered and unordered. So that's actually, that, that, so that's just kind of a quick, kind of a quick view of the um, the emailing composing thing. And also if the buttons are weird, the buttons are definitely weird. Uh, don't worry about them. That's not a, that's not Spark's fault. That's a, uh, I'm using the Mac beta. But now the biggest, the biggest reason why this is good is because Spark claims to, uh, they're not claiming this, but you can pretty much tell. They're kind of working based on user convenience here. They are, they kind of built this app with convenience in mind. Just navigating it, kind of just looking through your emails, just kind of composing emails, writing to people. It's all for, it just feels smoother and it feels quicker than traditional email setups. And that's for a lot of reasons, which, you know, I'm not really going to go into now because I would take a long time. So personally, do I like it? Yeah, I like the design. I can live with this, okay? It's not terrible. Uh, it's not bad. It's not, you know, unbearable. And it, it's not the best either, though, I will admit. It has this kind of minimalist, yet not minimalist. Like, it gives you kind of everything you need, but it doesn't, like, make things too cramped. Like, this is kind of a nice view. And things are even better on the mobile side of things. They have a mobile app. The, the mobile app doesn't really differ from the the PC app or the Mac app, really. It, it Only the UI changes, but the features are all the same. Okay, so next is the calendar. I really like the calendar simply just because it kind of keeps everything in one place. It takes, it, it moves Spark, transforms it from being a an emailing app, a strictly emailing app, to a productivity app. Now this is your productivity manager. You can now set events here, you can manage your events, you can kind of just take a look at what's going on in the month, take what's going on in the week, you can just kind of quickly overview as you check your emails. It's the perfect thing because in the morning when I'm checking my emails, I, don't, I, I have to open up my Gmail and I have to check all my, all my emails there. Then I have to go check my calendar just to see if there's anything new there. And the, the less places that I have to go visit to see all that information, the better in my opinion. So the fact that I can see everything here is neat. 
and their calendar isn't in, that isn't lacking in quality either. I can create events here real quick with this button. Uh, we'll make it zoom, and then um, I oh that's actually neat. So as you can see here, I can actually make a Zoom meeting right here, and then I can like throw it in there like as a thing. I can add a location. So this is all normal calendar things. But the fact that you can even get a calendar here and like set it up like this is honestly neat. Okay, so real quickly before we talk about anything else, let's talk about pricing. Now Spark, for all the purposes that I'm using it for, I'm using it for you know personal use. And if you're using it for personal use too, then good news, you don't need to. That you have literally no reason to upgrade for the premium. The free version literally gives you all those features for free, no catches, nothing. Everything that comes with the premium benefit is mainly for the team use. Now, if you're using it with teams in which you will probably want team roles and control and like unlimited email templates as opposed to just five, maybe uh, multiple team members collaborating on an email, something like that, then you might, might, you might want to consider this, but you can still make do with the free version. And that's kind of like what, that's, that's what I like about Spark here. They're being reasonable. And obviously, since they're targeting the team members, since they're targeting teams, that's why they have this whole setup. But as you can see, they also kind of cater for the personal people because it's the best personal email client, as they say. Okay, so that's nice. And um, personally, I like I like how they're doing everything. I like how you can. I like how you can. First of all, you can change your shortcuts so you can make them match whatever you were using before. But their defaults seem to work for me pretty cool because pretty well because I was using Gmail's. Uh, I guess Gmail shortcuts and Gmail shortcuts are the same. So obviously I like how you can style your texts. I like how you can pretty much use Spark as your productivity app. And so honestly, that's pretty good. And if I were, if I were to give it a star rating, it would probably be a 4.5 or higher. And honestly, it is a flaw. It's not a flawless app. It does come with some flaws. For example, I would not be happy right now if I was a Windows person because I have to wait now for them to develop this Windows app. I can be understanding. But like the fact that it's not there just means that I can incorporate this on my phone and not my laptop and it just kind of ruins the synergy that should be there. And it does sync by the way. So if you have uh, if you have an email registered on both devices, it doesn't actually like you don't need to manually sync it. It just automatically syncs, which kind of makes sense in retrospect. Okay, so that's kind of the bulk here cuz like Spark is fairly simple, but it does so much. And one thing that I like about it is that it takes the stand, I, I think I said this earlier, it takes the standard layout of a normal email service and it just adds on to it. For example, this read all button, like I mean I, I'm liking this, where you can only where you can select uh, where you can select to read certain categories as opposed to like checking off multiple things and then clicking mark as read for everything. You know, that clearing out emails in Gmail is kind of a pain, honestly, and in, in, in all the other email apps too. That's why I have more than a thousand emails here <laughs> sitting in my inbox. And when I read them, they all, all my emails from all my accounts go to this one scene page, so I can kind of scroll through. And obviously they have a search bar. I didn't think it was necessary to include it because it works like a normal search bar, but it's pretty nice. Okay, so that's kind of all there is for the Spark review. If you're curious or if you actually are intrigued by the idea of Spark, then let us know in the comment section below how you thought of it. Like, what did you think of the app? Did it cater to your needs or maybe is it lacking something? Do you wish they added something? Um, obviously, if you regarding our video now, if you um, have any questions, comments, or concerns, leave them in the comment section below. Any feedback at all will pretty much help us as content creators to improve our uh, future video quality. I guess looking past all its flaws, looking past the fact that it's only available on Mac OS, iOS, and Android, looking past pretty much any other flaw that you can think of, because I can't think of any others right now, it does the job fairly well. Like in my opinion, like I've used this for a week now and it's literally satisfied all my needs and it made typing, it made conducting my, it made my workflow just so much nicer. Like I actually felt motivated to come over here and email people. I've never felt that way before. Okay, I'll, I'll tell you right now. I, I've never enjoyed emailing people, but I enjoy emailing people now. That's a really weird feeling. It could just be trigger happiness, but yeah. So yeah, anyways, that's going to be it for this video. I accidentally sidetracked there. So yeah. I will see you guys in the next video. Let us know what you thought of the app in the description below. Uh, yeah, bye. Uh, sorry guys, real quick, I totally forgot to include one very important thing. I asked the guys over at the SAP team to let me know what they also thought of the app just because I, so, I was sold on the idea of Spark. Honestly, I'm so surprised it's free. I would honestly, like, I would pay for it, but like, since it's free, I'm taking the free option. 
So I asked the guys at Spark to uh, at Spa <laughs> I asked the guys at SAP to go ahead and check out Sparks for the Spark for themselves, and then tell me how they felt about it. And here's a list of just some of the things. So they actually um so one con was listed, and it's that the spaces next to each email weren't really that good. And I, I'm assuming this is referring to like the categories, like the spaces between the categories. And sure, that's yeah, I'll admit I, I'll say it because um. The styling, obviously, that's just uh, a style opinion, but you can modify that just a little bit in your appearances. I don't know to how much, just because I liked the default need, the default setting, I mean. So yeah. Uh, so then the pros were simply that the organization of each inbox was nice, it was pretty good. The smart inbox is a useful tool, agreed. Um, it, sorts, it helps you sort through important emails and stuff like newsletters and ads. The calendar feature is great, agreed, you know. Um, so, uh, it was actually a con here that you couldn't combine inboxes, C couldn't combine inboxes. And that kind of makes sense in a way, because let's say you kind of want two similar inboxes to kind of merge together, so you can see all that stuff in one place. Personally, I haven't been able to use Spark as long, I mean, I've used it for a week now, that's pretty long, but I haven't been able to use it so long as to, like, point out, like, kind of have that be an inconvenience for me. Personally, this is fine, so... The timing feature, the part, the part that you can schedule, or the, the feature that allows you to schedule emails to be sent later, that's honestly good too. And since it's free, and it, it, since it's free, it gives you a lot of value. So it's giving you a lot of value for a free app, and yeah, that's honestly nice. So that was just a quick list of stuff that the SAP guys had to say. And now the, idea, the video ends for real. I'll see you guys in the next one.